Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all for today's class. We will briefly look at what exactly we did it last time and then proceed further. What we looked at last time was uh, the reductions of alkynes, nitriles uh, with uh, Diabol H and we uh, saw that we can uh, stereoselectively reduce alkynes to uh, cis or trans alkenes and uh, we also can uh, reduce the alkynes and convert them to corresponding alpha beta unsaturated acids uh, which could be a cis or trans depending on the conditions that we discussed. We also uh, looked at the conversion of uh, nitriles uh, to the uh, aldehyde or ketone uh, depending on uh, what uh, uh, nitrile we take I mean in the case of nitrile it will be of course uh, aldehyde uh, with the diabol and how we could stop uh, it from further reduction to the corresponding amine. Then we also looked at the uh, Weinreb amides utility uh, especially to stop the um, reaction at the aldehyde uh, stage or a ketone stage where a nucleophile can be added to this and uh, it can allow chelation as um, one of the uh, parts by which we can have the stopping of the reaction at the aldehyde or ketone stage. For example, if we have here Li plus then of course we can have the reduction of it leading to the aldehyde formation. Now the over reduction or over reaction of nucleophiles is stopped because of the uh, chelation that is here. So uh, we discuss various uh, types of nucleophiles that can be added to the Weinreb amides. And uh, in, apart from the hydrogen addition like reducing agent we can also take say you have methyl magnesium bromide or any Grignard reagent that can be used and the reaction can be stopped say in this case up to the corresponding methyl ketone. Then uh, towards the end we discussed uh, the reductions with lithium aluminum hydride we also discussed uh, the reductions using lithium tri-tertiary alkoxy hydride and uh, lithium aluminum hydride in presence of uh, aluminum chloride where the use of aluminum chloride uh, modifies the uh, reducing agent to a, say for example you can have this or you can have this. And because of the electronegativity of the chlorine, the reducing power of uh, lithium aluminum hydride which is now modified to uh, having one hydrogen or two hydrogens or two chlorines or one chlorine is uh, reduced and accordingly uh, the selective reductions can be carried out. What selective reductions can be carried out uh, is something that we can look at it once again today is uh, we discuss this mixed chloride hydrides uh, which act as reducing agents but less powerful than lithium aluminum hydride. We discussed that the CX bond X is halogen can be reduced to the corresponding CH bond using uh, this uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride. Uh, but then the same reaction is not possible to be done uh, using uh, a combination of lithium aluminum hydride and aluminum chloride. On the other hand if we uh, take another example of uh, this type here say you have a bromide 
and an ester in the same molecule here. If we do the lithium aluminum hydride base reduction, then lithium aluminum hydride reduces this carbon bromine bond, introduces this hydrogen here and at the same time ester is reduced to the corresponding CH2OH. But if we take uh, lithium aluminum hydride in combination with aluminum chloride, then this modified uh, mixed chloride hydride reducing agent only reduces the ester and does not touch the carbon bromine bond. So, there is a selectivity in terms of uh, reducing power of this combination of lithium aluminum hydride and aluminum chloride. It is very clear that the, uh, the mixed hydride chloride for example, if it is something like this, then uh, the chelation of the ester uh, takes place more uh, easily than uh, uh, the direct nucleophilic addition of the hydride to the carbon bond to reduce the carbon uh, bromine uh, bond and replace it by hydrogen. Now, uh, it is also seen that we have an alpha beta and saturated ester something like this and if we reduce it with lithium aluminum hydride, we get a mixture of uh, allylic alcohol and the saturated alcohol. Uh, at the same time, if we use uh, the mixed chloride hydride reducing agent uh, like lithium aluminum hydride aluminum chloride, we only get this uh, uh, allylic alcohol as the major product. So, it is very obvious that uh, again here same thing is happening that only the chelation allows the reduction to take place. So, once this happens of course, you have a delta positive here and a delta negative here, then the hydride reduces this and goes further for the completion of ester to the corresponding primary alcohol. Now, there is another uh, reducing agent which is uh, comparable with uh, lithium aluminum hydride but uh, is uh, in some sense better than lithium aluminum hydride which is called as redal which is uh, reducing aluminum basically. It is a sodium bis 2 methoxy ethoxy aluminum hydride. So, this is the methoxy, this part is uh, methoxy ethoxy so and an aluminum hydride. So, it exists as bis 2 methoxy ethoxy aluminum hydride which is known as redal uh, and also it is called as vitride uh, by the uh, name of uh, its discoverer which is uh, vit. Uh, so, uh, the vitride or the redal uh, is uh, more stable in air and reductions are uh, comparable with uh, lithium aluminum hydride. One of the problems with lithium aluminum hydride as I mentioned last time is it is uh, very um, unstable towards water and uh, therefore not um, easy to handle. Uh, but uh, in comparison to that redal is uh, more uh, stable in air and uh, it is also soluble in aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbons because of the uh, increased hydrophobicity. That is not the case in lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride uh, is uh, somewhat more uh, ionic and uh, more polar than uh, redal and therefore, uh, this needs to be dissolved in ether or THF whereas this is possible to dissolve in uh, aliphatic and aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, uh, this redal allows uh, a reduction of the acids to the corresponding alcohol similar to the reductions with lithium aluminum hydride uh, and also uh, allows in a similar way reduction of uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones to the corresponding allylic alcohols. And uh, these uh, vitride can also be uh, available as a solution in the market and uh, therefore one can easily take it and use it uh, for reductions of various kinds. We will also see how further things can be done. Uh, for example, 
when, when the reduction of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone uh, is carried out uh, with a red al in the presence of uh, copper 1 like cuprous bromide. Uh, this 1, 4 reduction takes place. So last time I told that this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 1, 4 reduction has taken place and essentially what is happening is uh, it is more or less like a copper hydride type of uh, species that is expected to be involved. And then copper hydride being softer adds on to this um, in this fashion and we have 1,4 addition where we can expect uh, a species like this to form. And then this leads to the saturated ketone. So this is something similar to adding a say dimethyl cuprate or a such copper based reagents. So in a similar fashion uh, we can take a somewhat more difficult example and reduce it to the corresponding saturated ketone. So there are many such examples in the literature where such uh, uh, copper hydride type of uh, species is believed to be involved in the reduction of alpha beta and saturated ketones to the corresponding saturated ketone using red al. There is another interesting uh, reduction uh, which is a very specific and selective reduction that is of uh, epoxy alcohols. This 2, 3 epoxy alcohols, so you have 1, 2 and uh, 3. So this 2, 3 epoxy alcohol is uh, very easily available uh, via Sharpless epoxidation of the corresponding uh, allylic alcohol and therefore the utility of uh, these 2, 3 epoxy alcohols become very uh, important and thus the, their reduction to give the corresponding 1, 2 or 1, 3 diol is important. And therefore if uh, there are reagents that can selectively reduce 2, 3 epoxy alcohols to either 1, 3 diol or 1, 2 diol, uh, then of course the reaction becomes more meaningful and synthetically useful. What is uh, found that uh, if one takes red al or a lithium aluminum hydride, both of them are as I said comparable in terms of reactivity. They lead to 1,3-diol uh, as the major product and 1,2-diol as the minor product. On the other hand, if one uses uh, dibol uh, for the same reduction, and then what is found is that the 1,3-diol is uh, found in minor amount and 1,2-diol is formed in the major amount. Now how does this reaction occur? Uh, why should there be a selectivity? Now lithium aluminum hydride when it comes in contact with any alcohol as I mentioned earlier is uh, something that re, uh, re, uh, leads to the expulsion of hydrogen gas after the OH of uh, the alcohol or water reacts with the lithium aluminum hydride. So you have lithium aluminum hydride as a, a, a species which is having a negative charge here and a positive charge here. And when it comes in contact with the ROH, uh, we get here ROLI and of course ALH3 and hydrogen comes off. So same thing happens even in this case hydrogen comes off and now as this species can interact with ALH3 which is released here and can form the corresponding uh, negatively charged lithium plus species. So this is exactly what is here but this is coming from the epoxy alcohol. Now we can also write the same thing in this particular form here as we can uh, uh, slightly uh, rotate the bond. And now we can see that the reduction of the carbon oxygen bond of the epoxide occurs in such a fashion that the hydrogen from this particular part of the reducing uh, end uh, attacks at the carbon bond, uh, sorry carbon atom of the uh, epoxide carbon bond. Uh, where we have an SN2 type of 
reaction. That means uh, the hydrogen, carbon and oxygen uh, of uh, this species should be sort of collinear. Uh, then you have the uh, proper SN2 type of reaction taking place and this is exactly what happens. So you have an intramolecular reduction uh, after the lithium aluminum hydride has uh, reacted with the alcoholic path of the epoxy alcohol and uh, the reaction occurs in an SN2 fashion in an intramolecular fashion. At the same time when we take dibol and react with uh, these epoxy alcohols. So in a similar fashion as uh, uh, lithium aluminum hydride when the dibol comes in contact with uh, the epoxy alcohol then also um, you have a hydrogen here and then if dibol comes in contact with um, the uh, this OH uh, we, we can expect uh, this type of uh, species to form and this also loses this is a negative charge and this is a positive charge this also loses hydrogen and uh, forms an intermediate of this type. Now this particular intermediate where there is uh, an aluminum species uh, will have a coordination uh, with the oxygen that is of the epoxide oxygen and it, it forms a kind of chelate uh, complex uh, which is strongly held because aluminum here is trivalent and therefore uh, it is uh, highly electrophilic therefore the oxygen of the epoxide coordinates with the aluminum and forms this. Now since this uh, aluminum part uh, as against the aluminum part of the lithium aluminum hydride here does not have any hydrogen for the allowing the reduction to take place. Therefore the another part of the uh, similar molecule or dibol then reacts uh, to this part in an intermolecular fashion. So there is no intramolecular fashion and therefore the, the, the possibility of attack of uh, the hydrogen or the hydride to this particular carbon atom uh, would be much better if uh, between the two uh, this carbon is attacked which is relatively sterically free compared to this particular carbon. And uh, thus the reduction here uh, leads to 1,2-diol whereas uh, in the case of uh, in the case of lithium aluminum hydride it leads to the 1,3-diol it this basically leads to 1,3-diol. So this is how the, the reductions uh, occur uh, of the 2,3 epoxy alcohols. Uh, with uh, lithium aluminum hydride or dibol. And since lithium aluminum hydride is uh, similar to redol, the redol also gives 1,3-diol uh, as the major product uh, very similar in, in a fashion that lithium aluminum hydride does it. Now we have another uh, reducing agent which is known as a Lucci reduction. Uh, which is named after the uh, discoverer which is Lucci and uh, it allows 1,2 reduction to take place and uh, particularly when there is a alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So um, uh, the reagent that is utilized is a combination of sodium borohydride and cerium chloride which is hydrated with 7 waters. This um, specifically allows the reduction of uh, even alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes to the corresponding allylic alcohols. Uh, we discussed earlier in one of the lectures that the reduction of alpha beta unsaturated uh, ketones uh, and alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes with lithium aluminum hydride is not straightforward. Uh, it all depends upon many factors. But then uh, we also said that alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde reduction can take place with some other reducing agents and that is what the one that we are now talking as the sodium borohydride cerium chloride uh, based reducing uh, agent which allows the reduction uh, of the alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes also to the corresponding allylic alcohols. Of course the ketones alpha beta unsaturated ketones also get 
reduced. Now this Gamal and uh, Luigi are the two people who uh, initiated uh, examining the reduction of uh, alpha beta unsaturated uh, uh, carbonyl compounds uh, with uh, various metal salts uh, along with sodium borohydride as a reducing agent. As we can see here that there are possibilities of all the three types uh, that one can anticipate. So all three types of products are possible. So you have uh, allylic alcohol, saturated ketone and completely reduced uh, saturated alcohol. So uh, uh, lithium and uh, copper was found to give the uh, corresponding completely reduced uh, product as the major product. And uh, if one uses uh, cobalt and nickel uh, salts along with sodium borohydride, they give this uh, saturated ketone as the major product along with uh, saturated alcohol and of course a lot of starting material remains unreacted. It is possible that nickel 2 plus and cobalt 2 plus based reduction proceed via a different pathway, uh, but since a large amount of starting material SM, SM basically stands for starting materials which is nothing but alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. And if that is the case then, then it is not a very good reaction. So they, they did with some other uh, salts and particularly with lanthanide salts when they carried out the reaction. Uh, like lanthanum, cerium, samarium, europium, yttrium, yttrium and they all gave uh, uh, the uh, reductions in good yield from 86 to 97 percent and uh, particularly it was found that the, uh, the it should not be uh, europium, it should be um, cerium. So uh, the cerium plus uh, gave the corresponding uh, allylic alcohol in about 97 percent yield. So uh, what was uh, then discussed or discussed in the papers that were published later on is um, how, how does the reaction occur. What was initially uh, found and, and accepted that uh, if this complex is formed, for example, one could expect that we have an enone uh, like this and it is obvious that the metal salt which is used for the reaction uh, with, a, with whatever uh, the, uh, so the atoms are attached to this. Uh, now we can expect uh, some sort of chelation with this and then uh, we have a delta positive here and of course you have a BH4 uh, minus from the corresponding uh, sodium borohydride. And one can expect uh, the reduction uh, to take place uh, either at this carbon to give the corresponding allylic alcohol or onto this carbon to, to eventually reduce the double bond and make the corresponding uh, enolate which leads to the saturated alcohols or saturated ketone. That means the double bond gets reduced uh, in one case, in the other case uh, the carbonyl group gets reduced. So what was proposed, what if this complex, if this particular complex type of uh, should be CH3, uh, if it this type of uh, complex is uh, reversibly formed, that means uh, under thermodynamic condition it attaches to the carbonyl and then again detaches again it attaches. If that happens then there is a possibility of attack onto this particular carbon atom. So 1,4 reduction is more easily feasible if uh, it is um, uh, reversibly formed. That will of course depend upon the nature of the uh, M plus that is there and of course the groups which are attached. But if uh, it is irreversibly formed that means uh, that uh, immediately attaches to the oxygen and uh, because of the electronegativity of the oxygen and the electropositive character of the lanthanide salts, the, well, the moment carbonyl group attaches to that and if it is an irreversible attachment then it is obvious that 1,2 reduction would be much more facile something like this. So it is 
much easier to get 1 2 reduction. So therefore uh, the, uh, the reaction depends upon thermodynamic conditions and kinetic conditions. Because of the plus I effect of the two flanking alkyl groups the carbonyl oxygen of a ketone is considered to be more basic than that of aldehyde. It is obvious that if a ketone has two alkyl groups the plus I effect would increase the electron density on the carbonyl oxygen. In comparison to uh, aldehyde in which there is only one alkyl group and therefore the uh, uh, cases where ketones and aldehydes are compared obviously ketones will form more stable Lewis acid Lewis base complex with uh, comp electrophilic metal salts uh, than aldehydes. This is exactly what is exploited in Lucci reduction. In Lucci reduction for example, cesium 3 plus salts are utilized for the selective reduction of ketone over aldehydes and that is because of the stable Lewis acid Lewis base complex formation with ketone in comparison to aldehydes. In a similar fashion when we compare an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound with a saturated carbonyl compound we can see that while in the case of saturated ketones it is only the inductive effect that increases the basicity of the oxygen. In case of alpha beta unsaturated ketone it is the electron density from the pi system that is in conjugation with the carbonyl group and we can write a resonance structure like this in indicating that more electron density is residing on the oxygen of the alpha beta unsaturated system compared to the oxygen of the ketones and therefore it is very clear that an alpha beta unsaturated ketone would form a more stable Lewis acid Lewis base complex uh, with uh, say cerium salts in comparison to saturated ketone and therefore alpha beta unsaturated ketones are reduced more preferentially uh, in comparison to the saturated ketone. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, these are the things which have been exploited uh, in the in the Lucci reduction. Uh, we will um, uh, stop it today here and uh, look at the uh, further reactions of the Lucci uh, reagent with um, uh, different types of carbonyl compounds and what exactly is the role of uh, solvent in modifying the uh, Lucci reagent uh, in and how do they affect the selective reductions uh, of uh, various types of carbonyl compounds. So, you can go through these uh, aspects of the reagent that I have discussed and we will see you next time. Thank you.